Hello, everybody, uh, and welcome to the second uh, Community Rig uh, review with me, Lindsay. Um, again, I work for Toon Boom, and uh, I love this part of the job. Um, so I'm really excited. We have a couple of really cute rigs for you today to take a look at. Um, and once again, I want to remind everybody that I don't get a lot of time to look at these in advance. So uh, I kind of do this on the fly. And uh, I really enjoy this part. I really also enjoyed all of the feedback that we got after the first one last month. So please feel free if you have any questions. Uh, to send them along, I'm going to do my best to kind of uh, coordinate both um, uh, the talking and the, and the watching and make sure that we're catching all your questions. Uh, and yeah, so on today's uh, episode, uh, I have a cute little rig that was uh, submitted by somebody named Katie today. So Katie, if you're in the chat, please let us know. Um, and yeah, and Katie actually sent in a question that I was pretty excited about. Uh, she can't decide how to close his eyes yet. So uh, I figured as a group, we can also try and help her out uh, with that. Uh, I did look at that part um, since it was right there in the rig. I did go and take a look at that uh, really quickly. But um, yeah, hopefully we can figure that out today. And uh, anyway, yeah, this is let's dive in. This is a really cute rig. So I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so we have a little bit more uh, wiggle room with the camera and the node view. Um, I'm a really big fan of making sure that the program works for you. Uh, one of my favorite five-minute topic is uh, to actually move around your tabs. So I know that since we have a couple people watching that are kind of new to the software and stuff, uh, these tabs here are a fantastic way of kind of getting to know uh, the software and making it fit, uh, you know, your your style and your flow of work, depending on what department you're in. Um, so don't be afraid to kind of get in there and play with these tabs. Uh, you'll notice that my workflow does not necessarily match the uh, the typical workflow of our um, default program, uh, and that's just because uh, I I gravitate towards the node view. Um, I like to keep my library down here. Uh, I'll hide that for today. We don't really need it uh, today. Um, but then I also keep my color palette uh, tab over here and my tool properties. So feel free to get in there as uh, for yourself and kind of really make it your own um, so that you can kind of navigate the software even faster and, and uh, learn how to, what works best for you. Um, even if you're left-handed versus right-handed, I'm right-handed, so I like to keep my drawing camera view over here, my node view over here, and then all my tools over here. But if you're left-handed, you might want to do the uh, absolute reverse. So keep that stuff in mind. Um, and yeah, so all right, let's look at this uh, dinky deer, it was called. So super cute design. I actually love the ears. Um, and look at this node view um it's super clean uh very organized with the backdrops uh it's a very classic shape um incredibly aligned this makes it super easy i know last week we talked a lot about uh node organization but right here you can see exactly why uh, we like that so uh i just went ahead and swiped uh horizontally completely uh and then i can deactivate it or reactivate it. Um, so that is that is basically the, the biggest benefit of keeping your node view um, clean. So very nice work. Uh, all right, so let's do a quick um, a spot check is what I like to call it. So from here, what I like to do is double check where pegs are. Um, it's really nice when rigs are set up in this manner because I can actually go ahead and assume things without diving in and reading them completely. It's really nice to also have uh, the, the name of the limb at the top of the, um, uh, I always want to call it a backdrop. Uh, what is this? Is it called a backdrop? Why am I blanking at the name? Insert. Uh, yes, yeah, a backdrop. I think I have another name for it. 
uh, but uh, super handy. So instead of zooming in and taking a look at near arm master, near arm, uh, near leg shoulder master, uh, we can kind of zoom out and we can kind of start to envision uh, what we have here. So without diving in too quickly, I can see that this is the, the near front arm, this is the back arm, this is probably part of the body, yep. And we've got the same thing with the back legs, so the near back, the far back, and the tail. All right, the butt, the butt end, all right. So, all right, let's see, this is by the feet. Um, every once in a while, I find that people like to have a conversation about uh, where to keep the master peg. Um, I'm a big fan of keeping them in the middle of the feet. Uh, that way, when you are scaling something, you know, it's always kind of grounded. You can always envision that it's standing on something uh, and it's going to keep it there instead of having it in the middle. And then when you're scaling, it kind of moves the ground plane uh, with it. So that is a big, uh, I'm a big fan of that. Let's see. And then we've got uh, this peg here. So this is actually something that I've noticed uh, two different ways, because this is a quadruped rig. Uh, so we have uh, this peg here. I actually like to uh, rig quadrupeds like this. I kind of consider them still to be a little bit of a biped product. Um, and by that, uh, this, is, this is the peg that I kind of mean. We have the peg that joins the front arms uh, with the neck and the head, uh, and it allows the character to kind of bend upwards like it was walking on its two back legs. Uh, the reason why I like to rig a quadruped like that is actually because it resembles a human uh, quite a bit. So you kind of have an upper body peg, you have your, uh, your body and arms peg, and then you also have your neck and head peg. Uh, so that's actually, uh, I find, a little bit easier on animators because you can change this up. You can do a very different way. Uh, you can actually connect it so that the head is connected to the body. I don't know if I actually want to, do I actually want to break this right now? Uh, we could do something like this and this. And then we could also take this tail end and almost connect. When I grab it, can't grab it without getting rid of that. There we go. Uh, so we can do something like this as well. This is something that I've kind of seen where you have the body connected. We can even go as far as doing something like this. Whoop, keep grabbing something. Come on, you can do it. All right, so we could even do, go as far as swapping it out. So we have something a little bit more like this. So you could do a uh, body and then you have all your legs. I've seen this on uh, quadrupeds, uh, quadrupeds as well. Um, Really, the only reason I don't do this is because this is a different type of network where all of your legs become a little bit more separated. Uh, in some ways, it gives you a little bit more freedom to work with the legs, but I find that the networks don't uh, resemble a humanoid network uh, for animators. So that's why I prefer the other way. Uh, I don't know if anybody has a preference in the chat. Feel free to share that with us. Um, but yeah, so I actually I actually rig quad quadruped characters the same way that you did, Katie. So let me undo, uh, get back to the way that it was. There we go. All right, excellent. Okay, and so I'll just kind of quickly keep grabbing here. There is a little bit of a thing in these legs that I'm going to talk about, um, but I would say that in this rig, it's not necessarily uh, a big a big deal um, and I'll show you what I mean when we get a little bit closer so right now I'm just checking up all these peg pivots and making sure that they're all set that's always the first thing that I do uh, the second thing that I like to do 
is I'll jump into a artwork. So we've got this one. I, won't, I don't want to do a patch. Let's pick uh, one of these. And I like to double check to see what is going on up here. Uh, usually what I look for, animation using animate tools is turned off. Uh, when this is checked on, this could mean some problems in the rig. Uh, as you can see, when I turn that on, this piece turns red. Uh, the peg pivot also changes. Uh, that there's a little bit of a there's a little bit of a backstory there. Um, if you go to transformation, this is already set to do not use embedded pivot, uh, and that is talking about the drawing pivots uh, on the or the pivots on the drawing layer or the parent peg here. Uh, since we're not using them, which is a preferred method for cutout animation, you definitely want to stick to do not use embedded pivots. Uh, and controls. Uh, the reason why is because uh, now that I have this selected and this pivot is here, uh, the program now has two pivots to kind of worry about. So this can actually lead to some complications uh, in the rig and in the animation. So for example, if I find this piece in the uh, in here, if I move it, uh, you'll notice that I now have a keyframe on my drawing. Uh, that's something that we always want to avoid. So uh, just to show you why we do that, but it wasn't there to begin with, so that's excellent. Um, so turn that off. Uh, I just like to spot check just to make sure that all of the pieces kind of work like that. So I just double check a couple other ones. I'll go into maybe check the nose. Just randomly. Awesome. Yeah, it looks like they're all set to be off. Uh, usually those kinds of little things show up pretty quickly. So it's really easy to um, uh, to go in and, and, and double check. Uh, if I ever find one, I will show you guys uh, how to resolve those issues. But until then, uh, trust me, that is something that you don't want to accidentally miss. Um, all right, what else can we look for? Okay, let's double check for uh, any anti-aliasing. So we'll just do a quick high res render. I don't see any, any cracks anywhere. This is looking pretty good. Okay, turn that off. Uh, if I wanted to have a color card, it would also show me the outline of the character, but I think that looks pretty good, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, okay, and let's do a quick, let's do a quick naming. I think this is a very organized rig, so it looks like everything's named pretty uh, efficiently. There's no like double P's, um, something like this. I always try to avoid anything like that. It, it helps when you're um, labeling things. We used to have to write out notes. Uh, when we were giving out notes for our riggers to kind of go back in and look for, uh, it makes it very difficult to find something when something is labeled uh, uh, dash p, dash p, dash p, <laughs> uh, when you just have a trail of, of pegs. So that's nice to see. Nice job, Katie. Um, let's just really quickly scroll. I don't know if you guys can see the naming of all of the of the pegs. Um, I'm just kind of going through this pretty quickly. All right, so it looks pretty good. Um, all right, so let's think about those eyes. If anybody has uh, some suggestions for the eyes, right now what they are are there, uh, they're just drawings. They're just little drawings. And I'm gonna go and uh, we've got our line art separated on the line art. We have our color on the color fill. Uh, probably nothing in the underlay and overlay. Doesn't look like it. And we also have our highlights, which is probably done in the same way. So overlay, oh, actually these ones are in the overlay. Uh, do -do. Um, could probably keep that in the line art, but uh, since it's just the one drawing, uh, not, not a big deal. Uh, just for consistency, uh, you can do that. 
Uh, but if anybody has some um, suggestions, uh, we can talk about this afterwards. What I want to talk about is actually the setup of the legs. Now, this rig already has animation on it as well, and the animation is really good. So let me set up a quick little loop so you can see what we have here. So we'll set up our start and stop. Oh, actually, I meant to do that uh, here. Let it run on on the spot. And let's see if that loops well. All right, perfect. Yeah, so it looks really cute, actually. Um, so I don't want to make any like uh, serious suggestions. This is just something that um, I tend to avoid when I'm rigging. But I think in this case, because these limbs are very uh, narrow and delicate, I actually, it doesn't, um, I don't think it interferes with the quality of work, and I don't think it changes uh, too much of the design. So in this case, it does, it does work out well. But I just want to point this out here. So this is where, uh, this is something that I typically call uh, daisy chaining. So that is just when a peg controls the other peg. Actually, in my line, because there is this is a near arm shoulder master. Oh, I take it back. There are no daisy chaining here. Uh, daisy chaining would look more like this. Sorry, this is just a practical effect that my eye was playing. So let's go here. Let's change it so that it is daisy chaining real quick. This is what I call daisy chaining. So this is this is a great actually this is a great rig. This is almost uh, there's almost nothing that I can find in here yet. Um, so uh, this is what I call daisy chaining, which is what I would try to avoid, and I call it daisy chaining uh, because it tends to just be uh, when you need a 50 foot extension cord uh, and you only have five 10 foot extension cords. It's like you go from one extension cord to the next. Uh, so that would be why I call it a daisy chain. Uh, and what this does is it limits your animation a little bit. So in this case, when you move here, uh, it controls all of the pegs underneath. Uh, it is really funny that for some reason, that's what I saw, but that's not what we have here. Uh, we do have our main pegs. So that's, uh, this is exactly what I would want to see in this rig. So it allows me to use the hierarchy. So here we have the near lower arm. Here we have the near hand. Uh, we have the upper arm and we have the little shoulder. Uh, but then also on top of this with the hierarchy, we have the connection. Uh, this would be, I don't know if that would be considered like a wrist or an elbow, uh, or this would be the elbow. Uh, and then here is the connection to the shoulder with one more that gets you all the way to the top of uh, and connects to the body. Here we have the shoulder patch. So if we move this patch around, we're going to see that it's not uh, connected here. Um, we could do, what I could do is show you actually how to, uh, hmm, that might be a little bit too much. Uh, we could remove this patch actually and have it so that the body uh, cuts up here. Uh, so anytime the arm comes off the body like this, you can see the outline, but if the body is, or the arm is connected to the body, uh, we could, uh, it would always have that like nice little shoulder, um, I don't want to call it a break in the artwork, but uh, it would be a very purposeful way of creating that connection to the body. So let's see, we've got a couple colors here, or not color, questions here. Okay, so this is a rig for students, which is really awesome. I actually think this rig is going to be a lot of fun to animate. Um, I don't think the patches are actually a problem. It's just a, it's just a suggestion if you wanted to, uh, to do that. Um, you could set up a system. I think for students, this would be a really good way to kind of keep it. Um, so maybe let's not talk about patches today. We'll leave that for another, another session. Um, the one thing that this rig, I can see that it doesn't have, uh, is, and let's do from here, actually let's do this one, uh, no, let's do this one, all right, so if I wanted to uh, create an overlapping line, uh, you could do that here, this rig only has the line art 
the auto patch and the color art. So if I Z dip this forward, it's still broken, which is good or like seamless, I should say. Uh, but if you wanted to have a little bit of uh, more depth to these joints, because right now everything is just a solid outline, uh, you could do that. Uh, we could definitely add an overlay here so that you can have uh, a little bit of depth. And what I mean by that is let's go to this artwork really quickly. Copy. We'll do a quick paste. And we can remove the tops and bottoms of this rig. And because it's not reflected in our node view here, let me make a little bit of space here. Uh, we're not going to see that change because that is in the overlay of my artwork, you can see here. Uh, but since I don't have an overlay node, let's go find one. All right, so let's bring in an overlay real quick. You could do this, and you would want to put this overlay on top of uh, the line art. So it would be plugged in right in front of here. There we go. Uh, so this would give you a little bit of depth right there. And really quickly, you don't have to do it for all the pieces, but it would probably look really nice here. Um, and then that way your artwork is still going to, you see this animation, it's, uh, it's not going to ruin any of your animation. If anything, it's going to make it look a little bit more, uh, like it's got a little bit more depth uh, to it. There we go. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing, you could do that for all of these pieces. Um, if your character had a quarterback, you might want to do it for... Um, you might want to do it for this little piece as well, and it would be the same, the same thing. So you would just go to the line art, copy, paste, and remove the top bits. And if you want, we can kind of even look at this. Uh, oh, I can take this and change the color, and you can kind of see it a little bit. Because it's kind of hard to see. So let's just change it to this bright pink color. And since we don't have that in the time or the network yet, let's add it. This piece is this piece. So this piece is going to get connected here. Then we'll plug it in in front of the line work like that. Uh, and so you can see here. And then when you bend that paw, it's going to look just like it's got a little bit extra. I'll turn it to blue, it might be a little bit easier to see. There we go. So it sits right on top of the line work. So if you actually turn this on and you see the whole piece as uh, through all of the layers right here, uh, you can see there very quickly that your overlay, it's exactly the same as your line art. So you don't have to do any fancy details, but you don't have to add any cutters. Every once in a while, I'll see somebody add a cutter here uh, and it's so that they'll say, okay, well, this line can only be seen uh, within something else. So maybe this one, I'm not sure what this one is yet. I shouldn't Let's see if it works. Yeah, so like they'll do this. So now you can only see it there. But that's a cutter that you don't necessarily need. And your rig will be a little bit lighter uh, if you just omit it. And as long as all your colors are the same, stick with the... Uh, Actually, let me make sure which one, which one is that one. That's lines. Let's use lines. There you go. So that's a real quick way uh, to add a little bit of character to your rig without, and look, it doesn't even affect your animation uh, very quickly. All right. Um, all right, so let's think about these eyes now. Uh, now, these eyes are very simple, which is really nice. Uh, Katie has mentioned that she was thinking about drawing swaps that would also change the highlight or make eyelid pegs. I mean, either way is actually uh, very good. There's no design here to know what um, this eye is supposed to look like, so it's kind of hard. We can kind of make it up on the fly. So what I do like to do is I will add a composite for each eye. 
So I will copy and paste this one and just pop this one into it. And so now activate, deactivate. This is the near eye. And that way it gives us a little bit of a, an idea of which, which eye we're working with and um, also isolates the eye so we don't get any of our wires uh, connect or disconnected. There we go. Near eye. All right, so keeps us a little bit organized. Uh, we're definitely going to want a cutter. We don't know what we're cutting yet, but we're going to need one. So we'll just grab it. So the easy way or the quickest way would just be to probably cut the highlight from the near eye, just like this. So, but the only thing is you're going to get this problem. Um, now, depending on your, uh, depending on your, um, it's your design. So you can decide uh, if you're happy with that. I kind of like that the highlight is bigger than the pupil. Um, so we're going to try something a little bit differently. Uh, now we could do drawing swaps. Uh, we could also sync these drawings so that they're really quickly interchangeable. So you can kind of keep your, uh, your blink. Um, I don't know how expressive this deer you want it to be. That's also an option. Um, so let's see, uh, we can do, let's go bring up this drawing here and I'll take a look at the drawing. <laughs> Uh, there's only one drawing in here as well. So let's see, let's put a blink cycle. Let's make a blink cycle here. We'll start it. We've got some mouths. So let's put it, uh, let's start it here. So I will create a new drawing, uh, something like this. And so open. Double check. I think the line and the color art. Yes. Yeah, so let's put the line. Let's we have the line and the color art here. All right. So to turn this back on, we can just use our eraser and really quickly go in and uh, where's my eraser? Here it is. We can go in and just kind of create uh, a little a little thing like this. Um, so we have a open shut. Create a new drawing. And go back into here and grab the eraser. <laughs> Do a little like this. The only thing I know that it's not affecting the, or it is affecting the two layers right now. I'm not going to worry about it too much. I'm just kind of going to let that happen and I can go in and clean it uh, afterwards. Right now, I'm really more concerned about. Uh, how we want this to look. Let me turn that off real quick. And I just want to exaggerate the length. So, Clean that up after. Let's see what that looks like. So now we have our kind of closed, or wait, sorry, open, kind of closed, uh, closed, which we can definitely go in and change a little bit. Uh, and then we'll go back to open. So at least now we have a little, a little wink. Uh, another drawing that we could add in between here. So if this is a fully closed or a fully closed eye, what we could also do is create another drawing here. And I'm going to go and just duplicate this really quickly. And I'm gonna jump back. I'm gonna steal this one. Copy, put it into here. And I'm gonna do this one a little bit differently. Just gonna do a little. All right, so now we've got our, it's closing, it's closed, now it's opening, and then it's open. Uh, so I'm going to remove my start and stop, and I'm just going to focus on this blink right here so I can kind of play this. 
and I will hook this up just for a quick second, just so that that highlight doesn't distract uh, distract us. The other option that we can do actually is um, we can unplug the highlight and just let the, the eyeball do the work, but uh, we'll leave it in for now, and we'll do a quick little play. All right, so it happens quickly. Let me jump back into here. I'm going to extend the close portion just a little bit more and get it to put that one on twos. So let's just do this. So now we've got a, a closed drawing, a hold on the closed drawing completely, and then we've got an opening drawing, and then we've got an open. So let's try that one more time, and we'll hit play. All right, so now we have this. But what we don't have is that really cute little bubble of the actual highlight. Uh, I do like this bubble, so I do want to try to keep and preserve that. So let's see um, if we do this, what we can do to kind of preserve that bubble. So the one thing that I'm thinking about is actually changing these drawings a little bit so that they, one, they look a little bit cleaner. Uh, and I'm also going to show you how I would clean that up. Do, do, do. And I want to keep these two drawings that are kind of the in between the open and closed. Uh, I'm going to try to kind of, I'm going to make them a little bit bigger, especially this one, uh, so that we can kind of include that highlight uh, at all times. Because I think that this is kind of uh, a really cute aspect of the design that I definitely don't want to uh, dismiss. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to steal the artwork from here. Now, uh, I'll turn that off. Now, this line here has got a line thickness of 10. And as you can see, when I get into this drawing here, it looks a little, it looks a little funny. Uh, I'm fighting that right there. So I'm actually going to clean this up. This is a really nice, um, what we've got here is a really nice base, but let's actually go in and clean that up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the artwork for the, uh, the color art, and I'm gonna do a quick little trick. So right now, because it's just a, the artwork, I'm just gonna steal the strokes defensive lines, whoop, and I'm gonna cut it, whoops, didn't mean to cut everything. I'm gonna cut this. Uh, because this is the same, I guess I could have done this too, but I'm gonna po paste that back, and I'm just gonna change this down to one. And what that does is it gives us a really thin uh, drawing here. Now, uh, the, the other thing is, um, this will make our drawing a little bit smaller, so I can actually, by holding, let me just make sure I got these buttons right, yeah, so shift and option, I can actually hold it and make it a little bit bigger, so I'm going to do that, I'm going to turn this on real quick, just to make sure, uh, and the only reason why I did that was because I'm actually changing the center line for the shape, because I am changing the line thickness, I'm losing uh, half of the line thickness. So out of 10, it would have been five. So I'm just making it a little bit bigger and I'm gonna recolor uh, the interior of this and bring it down to the color art. And I think this is, this is a different color. I did notice that. So I will color pick, I will delete this, I will paste it and I will go back and paint it so it's the proper color. Uh, and so now it's virtually the same. The only difference is my line is just a little bit thinner. Uh, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna help me set up here. So I'm gonna delete this, I'm gonna go here. I've got my color art already there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use this and I'm just going to outline it without actually touching my color art. So I'm going to turn this option off so I lock myself out of selecting the color art uh, specifically. And I'm just going to go and create a couple little points here. Oop, that wasn't what I was supposed to do. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and grab here. And I'm just going to do a little... What I'm trying to do is I'm trying not to touch... Uh, this side of the of the line because that is kind of where uh, the design you want that to kind of stick. So I'm using option to break the handles, and I'm trying to trying to decide if I want how how much of a dip here I want to to have. 
So now I've got this, it gives me a little bit of shape. I have a little bit of pupil here that's overlapping uh, to play with. And I'm just going to quickly uh, paint that. So paint, control X. And if I jump, turn this off and jump down to my color art layer, I can replace here, Oops, control V. And I'm just going to double check that my dropper is still the right color. It is. It's set to uh, eyes. All right. So now I have a new drawing for the second one. And I'm going to go in and just double check. I always like to double check. There seems to be a little bit of a flash gap right here. I'm not going to worry about fixing that right now. But um, that's something that you'll want to make sure that uh, is not happening on your end. That doesn't typically happen. Uh, but here we go. So I just want to make sure there's no popping here. And I'm going to go and I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to go in and copy this outline, bring it over to the center, and delete this, paste this. And we'll do that one more time. So here I'm going to create. And the goal here is I'm just now creating a little bit of a. Um, an eyelid. There we go. So we'll do this and then I can paint this. Control X. Delete this extra piece. Control V. And now we'll double check. And so now it looks like whoop, whoop, whoop. yeah, that looks look really that looks really nice. And now I gotta do this one more time. I'm going to whoops, not cut, not cut it. And copy. And control V and I'll turn this back on. And so this one I'm going to make a little bit bigger. Uh, I want to have, uh, when it's popping open, I want the, since the, the physics of the eyelid, when you're opening your eye, this part is going to be the part that's moving the fastest. So I'm going to create a little bit of a bow here, but I'm just going to bring it down. And I'll put it around here. And again, I'm holding down Alt so that it doesn't affect uh, the other side of this handle. That's the part that I, I don't want that to change. Or not all. Yeah, Alt or Option. There we go. There we go. And so now paint that, Control X, and then I'll replace the color art. There we go. So now I have, let's see, let's see how this goes. All right. Now there's a little pop in there somewhere, but uh, it still looks pretty good. Could probably change uh, this point just a little bit. But now what we can do is we can set something up so that this highlight changes with this blink. Uh, and again, once uh, we could do something like this, so we can see what that looks like now. So that still looks pretty good. Pretty happy with that. We do have a question about uh, making eyelid cutters, and yes, you absolutely can. Um, what I'm doing right now is I am just creating a simple little drawing swap blink. I've been trying to preserve the little cute little highlight here. Uh, so we can talk about that afterwards. And let's see, the next one, uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to sync this drawings uh, together. So what this will do is we can actually go into our highlight also, and we can change the drawing so that it matches with our pupil. Um, and so I'm just going to sync this really quickly. Now, when you are syncing a drawing, you kind of have to keep a couple things in mind. Uh, what is going to happen? is this drawing, if I sync it to the near eye, it will be kind of locked to it, kind of like a buddy. But the nice thing about it is when you draw, when you change the drawing, it'll automatically change everything else. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly sync it, and you'll see what I mean by that. So I'm just going to go to Nodes, do Sync Layer With, and I believe we can find our, uh, just by typing in near... I, so then 
There we go. So Nira, I just want to make sure I have the right uh, drawing before I actually hit OK. And so now we get these little sync spots right here. So these two little dots just mean that they are synced. So now they are buddies. So what this is going to look like, you've got your near eye uh, here, which has a couple of the drawings. And I can also open this up so I can see my drawing substitutions. Make this a little bit smaller so you can see them all. Can you see them all one line? Nope. All right. So uh, we've got this. And now if I take a look at my pupil highlight, uh, I also have the same amount of drawings. Those drawings were not there originally. The program did add them. Uh, so what we can do here is actually go into this highlight, which is in the first drawing. So let me bring that up into the timeline as well. And we can copy this artwork. And this one was on the overlay. So you can leave it there. It's not, it's not going to hurt anything. Uh, you can also move it onto the color art layer if you want the consistency. Um, you could also, I've seen it uh, on the line art, just because if that's the only thing that's on a layer, uh, typically sometimes people leave things there as well. So what we're going to do on the first drawing, where the drawing's open, we don't, we don't have to do anything. So we're just going to copy, and we'll go to our next drawing, and we can put this here. Now, this is a, a different drawing. You can see that the drawing underneath is, and if I put it behind it, we'll see it a little bit better. Uh, something like this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I can turn, I think it's this one. Yeah, turn drawing, current drawing on top. We can take our eraser and we can actually go in and kind of, whoops, that eraser is big. Uh, we can kind of go in and just kind of change the shape of our highlight. Whoop. And always go in and make an adjustment. like so. Maybe get rid of this uh, sharp angle a little bit. There we go. And same with this one. Whoop. I'm trying to preserve this little twinkle. All right, so now we look something a little bit more like this. Now this might be something that we have to tweak a little bit. This is just a first pass. Uh, we can get rid of the highlight when he blinks, and then in this next one, I go back to this here. I'm going to paste. Just want to make sure it didn't paste offset. Okay, perfect. Uh, and put this back. And then here we go. And so now, uh, let's see, let's play this. Do a quick little. Now, uh, we can play with this a little bit, but what that does is it allows you to have a little bit of a hand drawn feel. Um, and I just really like that twinkle in the eye quite a bit. I like that it overlaps. So that's kind of why I went with that. Um, that way, a lot of times when you see flat black pupils too, uh, drawing swaps are really easy because you can kind of go in and make those drawings as, just as quickly as I showed you. Um, if you wanted to do the other way, uh, which would be having a cutter on top of the eyes. <laughs> so let me just move. Remove all of this. Just gonna make a little bit more space. You know what? I'll just I'll just make a lot of space. Bring it over here. Now I didn't even end up needing this cutter, so I'm gonna delete it, or I'll just pull it to the side. Um, they, again, these eyes are really cute. Um, you can also uh, let's see. Let me just steal. Let me just steal uh, this drawing. Because we have this little composite, it makes it really easy. I always try to add my naming before I change anything. So let's call it a near eyelid, and then I'll add the peg. 
before you change any of the drawings, I typically do connect things to the uh, to the actual hierarchy, just in case there's some movement around. Uh, let's say the character was resized and repositioned somewhere over here. It's very common that if you don't pay attention to something like that, I'm gonna grab this. There we go. Can I grab it? So it's very common that you can actually go into a drawing um, and make sure I'm on the right layer, turn that off, and I will just do a quick rectangle. So you'll do all the work, you'll set these line thicknesses. Let's do, let's do, uh, let's do 10. And let's color it with the color pick. Where is it? The color name. See? So we can go through all this work. We can set our pivot. And when we go and connect it to the to the rig, oh, it's changed, it's gone, where'd it go? <laughs> uh, and so it moves all the way over here. So uh, I did that on purpose. We always wanna make sure that uh, everything is in its place. Uh, so before you do your artwork and you're attaching something to a rig like that, you kinda always wanna attach it to the hierarchy so that you make sure you are connecting the artwork in the correct spot. So I'm just gonna grab it, put it here. And I'm gonna go here and then move that peg back. Boop. Just like that. So now what's nice about this is the again, these uh, these rigs are really simple. Not this rig is really simple, but like the design for these eyes are really simple. So I don't think that you need to overcomplicate this uh, too much. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to go in and I'm gonna put this right here, I'm gonna delete here, and I'm gonna turn this into a little bit of a semicircle. Uh, I'm a big fan of using uh, the shape and the line tools to kind of get everything done. So I'm just gonna do that really quickly. And uh, so now we can have a little bit of fun. Now obviously I don't have uh, the proper layering here. It's uh, We would wanna put this ear on top of the eye, so I'm not sure where that ear is here, so let's just go like this real quickly. Uh, and then that way, if you wanna have a cute little ear flop, I don't know if you've ever seen any rabbits do those floppy things, but you can do this, uh, which would look really nice. You might even wanna put it in front of the mouth. Uh, but you can have a lot of fun there. Uh, and I'll just hide it for now. And I'm gonna quickly give this a little deformer. And the way that I like to do deformers for this is, if I go to Tool Properties, uh, the envelope deformer is my favorite envelope. Even if I am just doing a two-point deformer, I do this a lot. Um, I don't like to use the, well, it's not that I don't like to use the curve. I just have become in the habit of using the envelope so that I don't have to worry about uh, accidentally creating a little rotational handle here. Uh, the other thing that you can do is you can actually turn this into a three-point deformer and I'll show you why. Uh, so let's say we've got our character, we want him to look like a little bit confused, like, hello, I don't know if anybody has any dogs, but my dog looks at me like this all the time, or kind of like something like this, you know, like, hello, it's been a, been a dinner time. But uh, you can do that. You can also see here that this is starting to pop out of the head. Uh, every once in a while, you have to make it really extreme, like real angry. Uh, and so what sometimes can happen is uh, this actually doing a pretty good job of uh, hiding everything, but it's also running on top of this eye. If we go even more extreme, uh, it actually pops our eye out a little bit more. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all of the information here, go back to my rigging tool, and I'm just gonna show you what I like to do. So I actually will continue this envelope deformer and make sure that it aligns really nicely. Just like this. And then what that does is it gives you total control over everything that it's gonna cover and you don't really have to go in 
you don't really have to go into the drawing and kind of change it because the deformer is going to do all the work uh, for you. Now, we are having some breakage here. I'm pushing it pretty far. Let's see if it actually shows up in our, in our render view, and it doesn't. So that actually looks pretty good. So you can have a little bit of fun uh, there and create uh, a blink this way as well if you wanted to. Uh, and do the same thing for the bottom. So you can have a combination and just turn that drawing off and on when you need it. So yeah, we have a couple questions. I'm gonna get caught up here. Um, if there's any other questions about this rig, uh, feel free to send them in the chat now. Uh, I think we're gonna, uh, do, 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 do. actually, uh, since it's almost five, maybe we'll just continue to talk about this one. Um, so if there's any other questions, feel free to ask. And I'll just remove all the information. All right, so someone is asking me, where did I learn to rig? Um, he's currently a third year student studying animation and want to specialize in 2D rigging. That's awesome. First of all, I like to think that uh, cartoon engineering is the best, <laughs> but I am super biased. Uh, and I learned it on the job, actually. I got hired as an animator uh, and um, well, let's just say my timing is not the best, but I was able to pick up rigging and I just fell in love with the craft. So I actually learned it right on the job um, and it was not the easiest, uh, but I was persistent and I stuck with it and uh, I just kind of kept going. And luckily, uh, luckily that was enough. <laughs> so I hope that you are able to figure it out before you get to the job because that would be uh, a lot easier, um, a little, probably a little less stress, <laughs> a little less stressful. Uh, but uh, probably the best decision of my life that I had no control over. So I'm very grateful for uh, my rigging uh, talent and my skills. Uh, definitely something that I fell in love with. All right. Okay, so no other questions on the rig? Mm -hmm. All right, so let's see. Let's turn this off. Oh, here's actually a good one. Um, since I just had this, so uh, I use a shortcut to show and hide my deformers. It's not something that is, um, uh, it's not in the software by default, but you can set it up. So if you go to deformation, do, 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 show current deformers, uh, I use M. M is a very uh, a good shortcut to set up. It's one key that we don't use typically in our software at all. So it's uh, usually free by default. Um, and so show current deformers is the one that I use, but it just allows me to go to anything and I can turn my, de my deformers on and off. Of course, now it won't turn on and off, uh, but uh, that is uh, one of my favorite shortcuts. Uh, makes it really easy, so I don't have to keep jumping up to here. Uh, and you can also see that I've turned the drawing off. The, the eyelid is not there. It's turned off, but uh, you can still see my deformer. Um, this is something that actually animators, I've heard that they don't like this. Uh, these deformers do get in the way. I mean, if you're, you don't need to animate that drawing, it's not there. Uh, so you can actually turn that off if you want to. And just by selecting, uh, you select the deformer. And if you just click on, where is that button? Oh, maybe I have to turn the drawing back on. That's probably, there you go. No, I'm lying to you. Uh, you can go to this one here. Uh, I have a drawing there because I stole that drawing. Probably should have thought about that first. But on my drawing where it's turned off, uh, what you can do is actually create a new deformer chain. And right now, if we jump into this deformer, you're going to have these offsets and the curve. And that just means that the deformer is a global deformer. It's going to be applied to anything that's there, even if the drawing is turned off. So if I want to change that up, uh, it's really easy to just go and grab the drawing and then click on the add new deformer chain, create new deformer chain. There we go. Uh, it disappears. And if we jump back into that, we have a new transformation switch node and we have our original deformer, which is still here. So it's still organized uh, and a new chain right here. This is called the deformer chain. It is empty. I don't have to add a deformer on there. But if I did, it would have another uh, group right here with uh, labeled to 
So I'm not going to, I'm not going to create a new deformer right now, but that just lets me turn that deformer off so that when I'm in, uh, when I have this drawing on, let's go back to this one here. So now my drawing is turned on. Uh, I can turn it off and my deformer will disappear as well. So that is something that I do notice a lot in a lot of uh, rigs. So if you want to clean up your, uh, your rig a little bit more for deformers, that is something that you can do. All right, so we've got a couple minutes here. We have another question about rigging quadrupeds in general. What pose would you start from to build a turnaround? Because recently I had to rig a T-Rex robot, which sounds like a lot of fun, uh, which technically is not a quadruped, but if you know what I mean. Uh, and eventually I decided to start from the profile view as too many parts were visible from the front, as too many parts were, weren't visible from the front, like the tail, the spikes, not even the eyes, but I was very unsure about my decision as I had never done it before. That's actually, uh, uh, that does sound like a very complicated uh, T-Rex robot, um, especially if you can't see all those things. When you are rigging a complicated character like that, uh, and you do have to do a full rotation, um, I actually still would recommend that you start from the front view uh, and then when you're rigging it, it's going to be tough. I don't have something that that's, uh, that's something like that right now, but um, hmm, let me see. I think that I still have to use this rig. Uh, all right, so if you are imagining your character, what you want to do is you want to imagine all the pieces that you can't see and when you are going and creating uh, all those drawings uh, for all of those pieces. Um, you still want to imagine them there and kind of where you would put them. Even though you can't see them in the rig, uh, it's best to still start from the front and kind of rig what you can see, leave the space for the things that you can't see, and when you get to the view that you, you need your objects in, so the tail and the eyes, um, what were the other thing, the, the spikes, um, then what you want to do is, uh, that's when you introduce your new drawings. Uh, the one thing that you will have to do, and this is not in this rig, and this is not something that I've, uh, talked about yet, so this is kind of a new concept, but one thing that I do like to do for people, um, when I'm rigging, uh, is I will add, let me find a, so the nose, perfect example here, um, when I go and create my drawings for a character, uh, before I start to draw anything, what I actually do is I will create uh, a new drawing. So I'll just call this um, I'll just call this blank because what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a blank drawing. Now I got to go find that blank drawing. E L A N K. Where are you? Did I hit close? Command R blank. Add and close. There it is. It must have hit close. Okay, so I'll add this drawing here just to the network real quick. And I'll bring it off to the side. Uh, but what I will tend to do is let me do this. Let me zoom in on a part of the network so we're not looking at the deer. Uh, all right, so I will. There's a blank drawing here. There's nothing on this drawing. I'll bring it up in the timeline. So here it is down here. I have no drawing. Uh, here is my my drawing. So I'll just turn that on. All right, so now I've got my first drawing here. But uh, that typically wouldn't be there. But what I do also do is I add a second drawing. And I didn't mean to do a duplicate. Let's see. Let's add a blank drawing. So a blank drawing here. Uh, and now... What I do is I go in and I rename it. And you have an option. You can go with off, uh, my personal preference, uh, and this just is a, a, this is probably like a seven year habit, uh, is calling it a ZZ drawing. So almost like it's asleep and hit okay. Now what the ZZ drawing does is it's just a blank drawing uh, and I will have this drawing here. 
Um, when I'm in the first stage of building, uh, I don't actually put any artwork on it. Uh, I leave it blank, but I have it labeled as 1NZZ. The reason why I do that is when I get to my front view and I have all those mystery pieces like the tail and the spikes uh, and uh, the eyes, uh, what I do is when I get to them in the network, I set them to blank. Um, and that will keep a spot in the timeline. So let's say in your first view, you don't have an image. So I'm actually going to delete this real quick, keep it uh, totally off. And on your quarter front view, you don't have an image. And then on your profile view, which would be the third, uh, the third one there, all of a sudden you have a drawing. So what this means is that these two first drawings are blank holes. Uh, and so what I actually typically do is instead of leaving them to be holes in the network or holes in the timeline, uh, I turn these drawings so that they're to the ZZ. So here, and I will uh, extend it. And so now I don't have any gaps in the timeline. Uh, and then when I go, I can start drawing on the first drawing. I've got my stabilizer uh, set to maximum here, which is why I'm, I'm a little bit slow drawing that hard. But uh, there we go. So the drawings are set to off. And then when I'm ready to get in there and use them, uh, they are there. So that's what I would do. Um, but I know that when I was first starting out, that was not what I like to do. I would have probably done the exact same thing. Uh, I've just built the profile view and then worked backwards. Um, but it's still a little bit easier because when you're starting from your front view, you can really get into the um, symmetric symmetricalness of the rig and the design. Uh, you can build one side and then you can use the artwork and kind of flip it. Uh, but that gets into a little bit more advanced stuff. So maybe another day we can cover that. Um, but let's see. Uh, there was another thing that I wanted to mention about this. Uh, yes, the Z and the off. The reason why I label it Z and off. So I'm going to actually create uh, another blank drawing. So I'll do this. And I'm going to label this one. I'm going to call this one off. So that you can see the difference. Um, so here we have our first drawing is set to ZZ. Our second drawing is set to off. And our third drawing is set to one. So that's where our image is. Now, uh, right now I have two blank drawings. You don't need to have two blank drawings. But if you notice, off is set to uh, this middle one here, uh, which I guess if I create a second drawing here, uh, it looks like this has been changed. Usually, sometimes this off is actually positioned on the left side of our um, drawing substitution library right here. When you flick through the drawings, they used to be to the left, but it's looking like it's on the right side now. Uh, the reason why I used the ZZ was just because, oh, no, no, now I know what it is. Alphabetically, sorry. The numbers are always on the left side of this uh, drawing substitution library, so you'll always get one, two, three, four, five uh, over here on the left side. And then when you flip over, you have off that's on the left side or the right side for now, but uh, because I also have a Z, the Z kind of trumps it. So depending on your labeling, sometimes your off drawing gets buried in between some of the other poses or like drawings that are labeled. Uh, and so I use the ZZ because it's always as far to the to the right side as possible. So it doesn't matter what I label things as uh, in here. I can always turn my drawing off uh, all the way to the right. Um, so that was the last thing I want to talk about for the blank drawings. And with the intention of the drawing substitutions, uh, it doesn't really make a difference because you just turn this on and you can just kind of decide which drawing you want to show uh, at random. So there you go. That is, uh, that is the last question for the blank drawings and there's one more question let's see if we can answer it real quick might not be related to this rig but are there more uses to the transformation switch other than the automatic created deformation chain ah that is a big question um you know what i don't think we're gonna have time to cover that today 
Uh, so I'm going to wrap it up. But uh, Asaf, if you want to come back next week uh, or next month, um, we can try that again. Uh, but yeah, you guys, uh, thank you for tuning in uh, and watching the rig. Katie, uh, beautiful job on this guy. This is a, I think this is going to be a really fun rig for people to play with, um, especially if uh, you're talking about students here. So I will send this rig back to you so you can have um, my example of the eyelid and the, the blinks. Uh, and let's see, where did it go? Where did the... Little dinky deer go. Oh, I have to move my camera. So, thanks for tuning in, you guys. And until next time, and everyone have a safe and happy holiday.